Welcome to American Rinzai Zen 101, segment two. In the first segment of this series, we introduced you to the Zendo, where I'm now sitting. And now I'm going to share with you what we actually do in the Zendo. Rinzai Zen has a main practice, two main practices. Uh, in other words, what we do in the Zendo. The first and most important one is called Susokkan in Japanese. We translate that as the extended out breath. And here's how you do it. You're sitting upright, your shoulders are relaxed, your belly is relaxed, your hands are clasped in your lap, and your eyes are cast at about 45 degree angle, so a focus. If you wear glasses, you can take the glasses off or leave them on, it doesn't matter. And you breathe out and you pay absolute physical attention to the experience of breathing out. You don't need to focus on any particular part of the body. It's about the total physical sensation of breathing out. And when you get to the bottom of the breath, instead of breathing back in as you normally would, you extend it a little bit further. What this does is require attention, and that is its main benefit. If you take it far enough, it's amazing what you can open to in terms of a, a freedom from habit patterns, from painful mind states, although this is not meant as an escape. But we'll get into that later in another segment, perhaps. Or you can email me and we can talk about it. Breathing back in, again, you're still focusing on the experience of the physical sensations of breathing. And again, then you go to the next breath and do it exactly the same way. It can feel terribly boring, but it actually won't if you add to it an element of curiosity. For the last more than 2,500 years, this practice has been taught and the people who practiced it regularly and with deep commitment have experienced amazing positive transformations in their lives. Otherwise, it wouldn't have kept on. We wouldn't have it now if it didn't work. And it does. A second version of this, and I would suggest if you're going to start Zen practice that you would start with that first one. Uh, but here's something you can do any time, whether you're actually sitting in formal Zazen or whether you're uh, pedaling your bicycle down the street or caught in a traffic jam, waiting at the grocery store or whatever you're doing, hanging out with friends, is to be aware of sound. Feel it as if, as if every single cell in your body had ears and feel that sound, even more subtle sounds. Pay attention all the time to sounds and that too will bring about a greater level of awareness for you. And it's also called mindfulness. But this can take you much deeper if you really, really pay deep attention. You can also do that uh, when you have a few minutes just to sit. You can do a, another uh, aspect of that, which is to simply experience the breath without extending it, but trying to become increasingly aware of exactly how it feels every part of your body. What's it feel like in your toes? How about your ears, your eyes, your chest? When you breathe out, is your belly moving? Is your chest moving? Is there tightness somewhere? All of this you want to pay attention to. Not thinking about, that's not paying attention, that's making stories, but actually experiencing, feeling. And then there's another practice that we do here in the Zendo. This is a very ancient practice as well. 
It is called metta bhavana. Metta in Sanskrit and Pali both, those are the ancient uh, languages uh, they were first spoken of in, uh, when there were written languages at least. And metta translates to loving kindness. Loving kindness is a feeling of unconditional love. And the first place it has to be done is towards ourselves. So many of us grow up in environments where we're taught all about what's wrong with us, at least from somebody's perspective, sometimes multiple perspectives. We're trained in this in school. We get grades on our work. A, B, C, D, F. And that translates into an assumption about ourselves which we try to hide because it's important to feel like you're okay, like you're, you're really accepted by other people, that you really can be loved. But so many of us who have experienced this kind of growing up in particular, and society also enhances it as well, have a, an inner lack of confidence that we really are worthy. One of the things that Buddhism teaches is that everyone is perfect, just as they are. We may not realize it, and many of us don't, and so we behave in ways that might not express that innate perfection. But that's just because we're covered over with habit patterns that were developed as a result of conditioning of what we assume people were saying to us or what they were saying to us for that matter of our negative experiences and so on and so forth and so we we act out of those and our main practice really is about becoming free of that conditioning and uncovering that innate perfection that we really are so the meta practice Bhava, bhavana just means the, the development of loving kindness. Uh, to do the metta practice, it takes a very short time, maybe five, ten minutes. Normally it's done in six stages. The first stage is to offer intentions of loving kindness towards yourself. You may not believe that you are worthy, but here's how you intend to be, right? That is the first and most important stage of doing this practice. And if you never go beyond this, it's still incredibly valuable and makes a big difference. You will find out if you do this on a regular basis. You'll find your life changing in positive ways, your attitudes, your interactions with people, and so on. The second stage is to offer intentions of loving kindness towards people to whom you feel a great debt of gratitude. Somebody who's really been there for you when things were bad. It doesn't have to be a relative, could even be a pet. But it's somebody that you, you have a special gratitude for. The third stage is to offer intentions of loving kindness towards a friend. Friends are mostly positive relationships. Every once in a while, the shit hits the fan. And, um, well, we all know about these things, but mainly it's positive. The next stage is to offer intentions of loving kindness towards somebody who's neutral, somebody that you kind of would recognize on the street, a neighbor several blocks away, about whom you don't know much, but you pass them walking their dog or something. So you recognize who they are, but you don't know them well enough to have made any inner pictures of them as being positive or negative. So they're simply neutral. The clerk at the grocery store or the UPS driver, uh, so on. This kind of person who is more or less recognizable, but not, not uh, you haven't developed any attitudes toward. The next stage, the fifth stage, and it's important always, if you choose to do this, this entire practice, 
that you master each stage before you move on to the next stage. And otherwise, you can get yourself into trouble. I know we like to jump over the first stage and just offer to uh, people who we feel grateful for, but that doesn't work, really. Unless you can accept yourself and feel worthy of experiencing loving kindness, then uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spill out one way or another in your interactions with other people, no matter what your best intentions are. So this fifth stage is to offer intentions of loving kindness towards someone about whom you feel negative. Someone who's wronged you, someone who's been awful to you, someone who you're afraid of, uh, whatever. And this is why you, it's so essential to offer intentions of loving kindness towards yourself first, a person about whom you feel great gratitude, a friend, a neutral person, all of these stages mastered before you get to this one, because this one is a particularly difficult one, and you have to lay the groundwork for it before you reach it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And then the final stage is to offer intentions of loving kindness towards everything that exists. So here, here's an example of a guided meta meditation. We can sit with our eyes closed or not. In the regular Zen meditation, of course, your eyes are open and for very good reasons. Um, but in this particular case, you can sit with your eyes closed Tune into your body, and if you feel any resistance, any sense of uh, reactivity, resistance to repeating these words, then go deeply into the bodily experience of what that resistance feels like until it dissolves, even if you miss uh, you know, two or three subsequent uh, statements. So I will begin this guided meditation and each time you hear something that I say, uh, a sentence that I say, silently repeat it to yourself and feel how it feels. And again, if it feels uh, difficult, um, stay with the sensations, the body sensations, not the story, but the feeling of reactivity or whatever you would call it, and you don't need to name it because that's not important. What is important is to feel it until that feeling allows you to go forward without that feeling accompanying you. It can take some time. Uh, depending on our histories, it can take a year or two even of repeating these day daily before we feel like we are worthy of accepting them. But persist, because it will make a difference in your life. It will make a big difference. You are worthy. So silently repeat after me these words. May I feel happy May I be happy. Especially now, when things are so stressful, may I be increasingly free of stress. May I be free of anger which doesn't mean that it doesn't come up, but that when I tune into the feeling, the sensation of it, it can dissolve and I don't have to act. May I be free of pain and again, it doesn't mean that pain doesn't come up. 
but that I know how to be so completely one with the experience of it that there's not the suffering that would otherwise be there. May I be healthy. May I be safe. May I be free from anxiety and fear. And again, if we tune in to the physical experience of these, deeply enough, they will dissolve and we will be free from them. May I see ever more clearly May I be free, increasingly free, from confusion, misunderstanding, misperception. May I be filled with peace so completely that other people feel it around me. May I be filled with loving kindness towards myself, which makes it possible to feel it towards others. May the great well of compassion that lies within me rise and be wisely expressed in everything I do or say or think. May I live in harmony with all life. May I truly become free. And again, if you do that meditation, and you can use your own words too. There's no real need to do it exactly the way you've heard it. Uh, although you can listen to this uh, little segment and follow along if you want, or you can create your own. And that's it. That's what we do, but we do it on a regular basis and we do it with deep commitment because that makes a difference. Considering how long we have developed into the habit patterns, the behavior systems that we embody at this point, it doesn't, it doesn't end overnight. It takes time, but just one step forward, one breath, can make an enormous difference in your world. And that's what American Renzai Zen is all about. I thank you for listening. And you're welcome to contact me if you would like some help. <laughs>